Hello, my name is Maria, and this is the second part in making water kefir. This is known as the second fermentation. The water kefir has been sitting out on the counter for two days. We are seeing some uh, different uh, movement happening within the jar. You can see little bubbles going up and down, as well as you're also seeing some bigger uh, grains that are possibly at the top. And basically what happens with the grains is as they grow, they tend to go up to the top, release some of their, uh, their carbonation that's in there. But generally, if you're seeing some of the grains be up on top, generally you're seeing uh, some real growth, which is a good, uh, it's a good sign to see. Now we're ready to go on to the next, the second fermentation, which is when we can flavor and uh, the kefir and also uh, separate the grains from the liquid. So let's pour out our, uh, our grains, our kefir, gently. Remember you want to use plastic utensils at best. There you go. One of the last things that you saw pour out is our eggshell. As you've noticed, it's no longer white. It's kind of brown. The longer it stays on there, the browner it'll get, and eventually, basically, the outside disappears. But you will notice that the inside skin goes brown, but it does not, uh, it does not disappear. So eventually, you will have to fish that one out on its own. The flavoring options are pretty much endless. I just have some here that will show you basically what I like to use. In our house, generally, my husband tends to like the ginger kefir. So sometimes I will use fresh uh, ginger and just slice it up into little tiny sticks so that it easily comes out of my bottles. And other times I've also found some uh, ginger tea, 100% pure ginger. I find the tea bags are a little harder to get out of my bottle once I'm finished, but the uh, nice side to it is there's no peeling, it's quicker, and there's also another side to it, which is the fresh ginger, as with any fresh fruit, you tend to get a little bit more of an alcohol content. Uh, when it comes from the tea bag, it is not so. You can also find some dried items, such as this. This is um, dried sorrel flowers and once again it's for making tea and therefore it's good in your kefir. So now let's pour our kefir into the bottles. You don't want to fill them up completely to the top due to the fact that it does need uh, some room because it will be creating a lot of uh, carbonation and you will also need to do a little bit of maintenance so that it doesn't uh, explode your container. We have a little more on one than another. That's okay. So for my husband, we're gonna put in some of the fresh ginger. Like I said, it's really up to you what you prefer. Do a little bit of exp experimentation and you will decide what is best for you. In this one, I think I'm going to choose some tropical passion fruit. Now, when you're using fresh fruits, ginger, or fresh juices like this, you really don't need much, number one. Number two, they can tend to ferment and the alcohol content get a little higher. As I said, uh, when you're using tea bags, the alcohol content tends to be a little bit lower. But simply what you're gonna do is you're going to simply just close up your bottles and put them on your countertop, at least for a day or two. Once a day has gone by, and I have a bottle here that actually has been sitting here for about two days. But what you wanna do every day is you want to release some of that air, especially if you're using juice or a fresh ginger, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of carbonation built up. So very carefully, you wanna open this up. Now, I must mention one thing. The amount of carbonation will depend on what kind of sugar you, you use, how much you use, and what kind of products you're adding on after, such as the fruits or the fruit juice. 
If you're using white sugar, you're going to get next to no carbonation. It's going to taste flat. It's going to taste pretty tasteless. Uh, so keep in mind that you will see more action with depending on what you're using. Did you see that? Now you have to be careful. There you go. This one's not too bad. If this was juice, you're actually going to get a lot more and you might be sitting here for about three to five minutes, allowing that air to breathe a little at a time. Uh, so it doesn't just spurt up all over your, uh, all over your kitchen. Now, as soon as this is put into the fridge, you will find that the carbonation slows down. So generally when it's room temperature, that's when you're going to see more action. When it's in the fridge, it really slows down quite a bit. I tend to leave my bottles out on the counter for approximately two days. And uh, when, especially if I'm using fruits or juices, then every day you make sure that you let it breathe out. After two days, that's when I put it in the fridge. Thank you for watching and enjoy your kefir.